Hey devs, in this video, we're going to walk through how to set up a project for a GitHub repository so that we can manage our GitHub issues. So that project will look something like this once we're done with a backlog, a to do column, an in progress column, and a done column. So to start, we'll open up our repository that we want to work with. In this case, I'm working in this mobile ICP repository. And we'll see that I have two issues here currently, and I want to be able to track the progress of these issues a little bit more easily rather than relying on things like labels. So to do that, I can go to this projects tab and we'll see here an overview of what GitHub projects allow us to do. So you see, they mention things like sorting tasks, planning your projects, tracking progress, sharing status, um, and then also automating your workflow. Now these automations are really cool and we'll look at these a little bit later on in this video. So to start, we can create a project. Now we can go ahead and add the name for this project. So in this case, we'll just call this, um, call this R and D because that's really kind of the phase of this project at this point. And we'll just give this a quick description now down here, we can choose the project template. So if we click on this little drop down, we'll see we have several types of default project templates we can choose from. So we could choose a basic Kanban style board. So if you aren't familiar, a Kanban style board is basically what we saw previously right here. It's this idea of having multiple columns that represent different uh, statuses of your issues. And then as you move an issue through its life cycle, you can move them through from sort of backlog to to do in progress and done. So that's what this basic Kanban looks like. You can then also do an automated Kanban, which essentially is the same thing, but GitHub will automate things for you. So for example, when you create a PR, it might automatically move a referenced issue from to do to in progress or to done possibly when it's closed out. So this can be really useful, but I want to walk through sort of manually how to set up some of those integrations. So we won't choose this one for now. You could also do an automated Kanban that is dependent on pull request reviews, which is a good thing to have. But again, we'll kind of look at that manually towards the end. Um, or you can also do this bug triage, which if you just want to be able to manage and track bugs and uh, the priority of those bugs and what's going to get fixed sooner or later, you could do this option. But for this video, I want to keep it pretty simple. So we're going to go basic Kanban and then we'll go ahead and hit create project. So once you hit create project, you'll be presented with this new default project board. So in our case, because I chose basic Kanban, it gives me three columns, a to do column an in progress column and a done column. And then we see here that we have these little cards in here, which GitHub projects refer to as notes. You can add a new note by clicking plus, and then it'll bring you up this little window where you can input your note. So I'll just call this sample note, and then I can click add. And so now this note just kind of lives here in this project. You can drag it between different columns um, and you could use it to just have some kind of useful information or maybe direct people where to go or what to do with this board. So that's basically what they're doing here with these default notes. It's sort of walking you through what to do next here and kind of how to use cards or automations. So these can be useful for certain situations, but most of the time we're going to be working with issues. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these notes for now. All right. So now we have our empty columns. Let's go ahead and populate some issues into these columns. So we'll see over here on the right hand side, we have this little search window. And it's searching right now for open issues and it's pulling up two issues, both of the ones from our repository. So we can very easily click and drag these issues over here into our to do column. So this might be sort of your initial location for any issue, or you might want to create a backlog 
and have the to-do be for your current planning session. This is how I kind of like to work. So I'll add a new column and I'll call this backlog. And you see here, when you go to create a new column, there's this little automation section and there are some presets here that we can select in terms of how GitHub is going to think about this in terms of automation. But again, we're going to leave off on any automation for now. So I'll leave that as none and I'll create the column. And then now I want to drag this column over here to the left because I want to work from left to right as I am working with my issues. So then again, I will move these over here. So now any brand new issue I can, I create can end up in the backlog. And then things I am currently working on could be moved to in progress. So for example, right now I am currently working on setting up a hello Pro world project for Kotlin multi-platform mobile apps. So I'll move that to in progress. And then for this current milestone, I want to move this investigate CI into the to-do column because it's kind of the next thing on my to-do list. So now I've got both of those tracked and I can see what the status of these issues is very quickly. Now that we have our basic Kanban style board set up for our GitHub project, and we've looked at how we can add issues to each column and move those issues around, let's look at starting to set up some automations for these columns so that we can automatically move issues through their life cycle without having to remember to perform all the operations manually. So the first column I'll take a look at here is backlog. Now, ideally, we'd be able to maybe automatically put issues into the backlog when they're created. So let's see how we can maybe do that. Well, we'll click on the three dots here in the upper right corner of the column. We'll go to Manage Automation. Here, it's going to ask us to sort of choose a preset um, for the behavior of this column. And if we look at this, we'll see we basically have three options. We have To Do and Progress and Done. Now, the closest thing here to what I described would be To Do, which is planned but not started. However, for Backlog, I really want it to just be uh, not started. So I don't actually have a direct match here. So we'll actually leave backlog empty for now, and we won't add anything here in terms of automation. So our next option then is to do. So if I come here and I click manage automation, now I have the to do preset automatically selected. So here I can actually start to configure this behavior. So I could say issues will automatically move here when added to this project. I don't want to do that because I'm going to want to default to the backlog. However, I could say if a closed issue in this project reopens, it will automatically move here, which again, I don't know that I really want to do. Or you could move pull requests. You could say a new pull request will automatically move here when added to the project. That is something that I don't want to do quite yet or if a pull request is reopened. So again, there's not much I wanna do here, but if I come to in progress, again, manage automation, we'll see we have the in progress a preset selected. Now we could start to play with some of this. So for example, I want to move new pull requests automatically into the in progress uh, column here. And then you could choose to move pull requests if they were approved or if they are pending approval. But for now, I'm just going to leave this as newly added, and then I'll click Update Automation. And then lastly, we could come over here to the Done. And so here we can say we'll move issues here when they are closed. So that is something I want to do. And then we'll merge pull requests into the Done column when they are merged or if they are closed with unmerged commits. So this will help us automatically move any pull request cards over as well. So again, I'll click Update Automation. And so now we can kind of look at what this uh, whole workflow could look like. So I'm going to come over here to Issues, and I'm going to create a new issue to do something small like update one of my issue templates. So I'll click New Issue. Um, in this case, I am going to update the, um, let's say, engineering issue template. And then I'm going to just give this a quick name, um, 
date template and then under additional context we'll just say NA. So we'll go ahead and submit new issue. So one thing to point out here is that now that we have an issue we can come over here to the right hand side of the screen and we can select projects and we could add lists to our new project directly. So in that case I will go ahead and click R&D and so now we see that this has been added to the R&D project and is listed as awaiting triage. So if I come back over to project and I'll open up R&D, we see that we don't actually see that issue card anywhere here. However, if we go up here into the upper right, we'll see that we have one card in the triage section. So basically this means it's waiting for us to add it to the project and tell it where to sort of put it initially. So for me, initially I might put this in the backlog. And then when I was ready to actually start working on it, let's say for uh, during our planning or something, I might move this over here into the to-do section. Now, if I come over into our code and let's say I wanna open up this issue template and actually make a change here, I'll come in here and I'll edit this and I will just add um, the suggested message here. Might be helpful. And now if I'll preview this, I can see, all right, this is what my new change is gonna look like. So now I'm gonna come down here and click create a new branch. And I'll just go ahead and leave that as uh, the default patch name. Then I'm gonna propose the file change. So now I have a new PR set up and I want to reference this issue. So I'm going to call this fixes number five. And then we'll just say updates the engineering task issue template. Oops. And then I'll go ahead and remove the rest of this because it's not strictly relevant here. And so now I'll click create pull request. And so now if I go over to my project, now I might want to add a new card. So you see here, I now have a pull request that I can add. So I'll move that over to in progress here. And now if I click on this, it'll pull the info up for that issue on the right hand side of the screen. And if I wanted to actually open up into that pull request, I could click on it once again, which will open it up in a new tab. Now I can click merge pull request. Then I'll delete this branch. We'll see now that it's updated this uh, progress meter here on the project section. And if I go back to projects, we'll see now that the pull request card has automatically been moved into the done column, as well as the issue that it referenced. So by just merging the pull request, those issues have automatically been moved across in our Kanban board. And this is really helpful for developers because it lets us focus on pull requests, reviewing code, closing things out, and we don't have to spend quite as much time manually moving all these cards through their life cycle. Hopefully this has been a helpful overview of how you can add a GitHub project to your repositories and use it to track your GitHub issues using a Kanban style board. Now you can work with projects in other ways. There are different types of automations to set up and you can kind of configure them to fit your needs, but hopefully this is giving you just enough information that you can start to explore what works best for you and your projects. Thanks for watching and until next time devs.